My name is Mrs Ely. I'm the Deputy Head Teacher in charge of the curriculum. I'd like to thank you for logging onto this Year 8 Raising Achievement presentation, which has been put together by myself and my colleagues in the different subject areas. Some key information to begin with then. Um, the Year 8 subject content, if you're interested in finding out what your child is studying each half term, go onto our school website and under the learning tab, you will find curriculum newsletters for each half term, which will give you information on what your child is studying and how the work is going to be assessed and how you can support them. As regards home learning time, um, in year eight, year eight, we expect students to spend between 20 and 30 minutes on each home learning task. Uh, students have a full week to complete their home learning and on any given day you'll find that they may well be set three or four pieces of work. We recommend that they do the home learning on the night that it is set and then they bring it in on the correct day. This allows for plenty of time should they have any difficulties or need to speak to the teacher before the work is due in. We hope that um, the year will go smoothly and there will be no issues or concerns, but if you do have um, anything that you want to raise regarding um, your child's lessons, can I ask you to contact the subject teacher or the curriculum or subject leader in the first instance? Um, what you can do then to support your child, um, providing them with a quiet space to complete schoolwork is very important so that there are no distractions um, which might require you taking away electronic devices like mobile phones for example while home learning and study is being done. Um, taking an interest in what he or she is studying, looking at their books, um, talking to them about their work um, is also beneficial as well and of course ensuring that they have a good diet, sufficient sleep and that they attend school every day. This slide shows you the impact um, of attendance on student progress. Um, it's actually a slide um, that's linked to GCSE performance um, back in 2019. Um, and basically, um, there is a very strong correlation between students attending every day, being in their lessons and completing their work, and the, the GCSE grades and obviously the progress that they ultimately make. So unless your child is very unwell, um, they should be in school every day. And thank you particularly with, uh, for your support with that one. The remaining slides that follow then um, have been put together by subject staff. They are listed with the core subjects first in alphabetical order. So that is English, Maths, RPE and Science. And then the other subjects follow um, after that in alphabetical order. So thank you very much um, for taking the time to, to read and to listen to what my colleagues have put together. And I hope at the end of it, you will feel much better informed about what your child is going to be doing during this academic year and how you can support them with their studies. So thank you for that. Welcome to the English department. My name is Miss Safferden and I'm the Deputy Curriculum Leader for English. Today I will be covering what we study in English in Year 8 and our aims and expectations for the year. As a department, it's our desire to foster in our learners a lifelong love of reading and writing. We know that our current year eights are bursting with potential and creativity, and we want to harness that. We want our students to continue to reflect and build upon prior learning, stretch themselves and be proud of the work they produce. Our aspirational and diverse curriculum challenges our learners to become critical, creative and independent people who have inquiring minds and who ask big questions about our world. English as a subject lends itself really well to not only the development of reading and writing, but also oracy skills, general knowledge and what we call cultural capital. Above all, we aim to equip our learners with the skills to succeed in life, in their English exams and ultimately in their GCSE exams, so that when they leave us, they have the brightest future possible.
So as mentioned previously, our Year 8 curriculum is very diverse and it offers our students a lot of opportunities for creativity and development. We begin the year with non-fiction writing, which is what our students are currently studying. They explore various different media outlets. We look at newspapers, social media and magazines. We also get them to create their own digital marketing campaign, where they're developing those language skills and the ability to persuade. We move on to a World Poetry Unit. This one is an amazing opportunity for our students to learn about different cultures around the world. We want our students to love poetry by the end of it. Next, we move on to our Shakespeare play, Romeo and Juliet. Obviously, it's one of the most famous plays, so there may be some prior knowledge. We want our students to understand that although Shakespeare, when you first read it, may appear to be difficult, it is still accessible, and we want them to enjoy the challenge with this play. Next, we move on to a detective fiction unit. We get to look at extracts from Sherlock Holmes and get our students to begin to adopt and write in that genre, as well as build on those analysis skills, inference and deduction, just like Sherlock Holmes himself. Towards the end of the year, they move on to a film study unit where they study a film called Rabbit Proof Fence. It's an incredible film where they learn about the context of Australia and also they move on to the classic film Jaws, which may seem quite dated, but the students do love it. It still has the same impact today. That shark is pretty scary. What they do is develop their analysis skills and their ability to use that film terminology and analyse the deeper meanings behind both films. Finally, we end with Private Peaceful, which is a classic and Michael Mopelgo is known for really engaging readers emotionally with his writing and that's what we hope to achieve and we want our students to enjoy too. So how are our students assessed? During every half term, the students will typically have a formative assessment and a summative assessment. The formative task is an opportunity for your child to have a go at responding to a question or questions, which the teacher will then mark closely, providing very specific feedback about what went well and how the work can be improved. The summative assessment takes place once students have responded to feedback from the formative assessment with the aim of using the previous learning to improve further still. Students are assessed on the following um, reading skills and this for example is comprehension which the students will be quite familiar with um, from Key Stage 2, inference and analysis, writing skills including structure, ideas, content and technical accuracy and oracy skills. An aspect of assessment which is vitally important is the teacher feedback and this includes verbal instruction, improvement suggestions, modelling, written feedback and the students will then be given the time to act on this feedback in order to improve. The students are also expected to complete home learning. In English, the home learning should take up to 30 minutes per week. This will take the form of spellings and reading. They have been given a booklet um, and this, in this they will need to show evidence of completing the homework by filling in the log once a week. First of all, they have to complete the sentences using those spelling words in the booklet and then they have to complete the reading log at least three times a week. Teachers will check every week, which will be signed off. We also ask that parents and carers do this so that you can keep an eye on their progress and their development with their spellings and reading. 
We also are taking part in a literacy home learning, um, which is a whole school approach. They are required to spend up to 60 minutes per week on Lexia. The students have been given their logins for this in their library lesson. It is recommended that a maximum of 50 minutes per day rather than a straight 60 minutes. The programme suggests that the students who do short bursts make faster progress. More information on this will follow in their English lessons. So I'd like to finish with how you can help your child with English from home. The most beneficial way is to encourage your child to read. Reading regularly is the very most important thing that any child can do to improve their English skills. The benefits of regular reading are huge and these include things like expanding their vocabulary, improved literacy skills, higher levels of creativity and imagination, improved concentration and improved comprehension, analysis and evaluation skills. Another way that you could is to have discussions with your child, maybe ask them about what they've been learning in English and um, ask them to talk you through their lessons and what they're studying. You could ask what their home learning is about and also have a look at it. The process of talking this through um, with the child helps the children to cement the learned knowledge and skills and to improve memory and retention. Hi, I'm Mrs Johnston, the Key Stage 3 Coordinator for Maths, and I'd like to tell you what to expect from Maths this year. Here is an overview of the topics the students will be covering in Year 8. There will be an assessment at the end of each topic and towards the end of each term. Here is part of the much more detailed breakdown of the topics. This can be found in the Files area of Teams. Every student has access to this. There is a Sparks reference for each topic. This is particularly useful if a student has missed a lesson, wants to revise for an assessment, or just simply wants to get ahead. Every lesson starts with a skills test, which gives students an opportunity to practice old or recent skills. New learning is then modelled by the teacher on the board, and students are expected to copy down examples. They then have these to refer to when doing further practice or an open book assessment. Towards the end of each topic, students get a chance to apply these skills uh, in worded questions or exam type questions. Students are assessed at the end of the autumn, spring and summer terms. A topic list is provided to students in advance to aid with revision. In addition, there are smaller unit assessments after each topic. These are mainly open book assessments, so students are allowed to use their class notes. Progress is tracked and additional work may be set to help address weaknesses that have been identified during the assessments. Most of the home learning is set on Sparks Maths. As the homework is personalised, students get instant feedback and support is available for each task in the form of a video. Students are expected to be able to complete 100% of the home learning each week. This is achievable because the work is based on what they have been doing in the lessons and they have a week to complete the tasks. 
If students are stuck with the tasks, then they can attend Maths Homework Club or come and see their teacher. Students are expected to show working out in books and write out any questions they can't do so they can get help more easily. For more information, please click the link on this slide. So how can you help your child? One of the main ways is to ensure they arrive at every lesson ready to learn. This involves having all of the equipment they need, including a scientific calculator and often a math set as well. Another way is to ensure home learning is done to the best of their ability. Students are given a week to complete the home learning, which allows time for getting help if they need it. If your son or daughter is struggling or becoming frustrated with the task, then they should either leave it and try again later, ask a teacher for help, or attend the Maths Homework Club, which happens on a Monday. Finally, use positive language when talking about maths. Don't tell them you hate maths, even if you do, as they will then think that they have inherited a bad at maths gene. Encourage them to persevere when they are finding the work difficult. Draw attention to where you are using maths every day, maybe in your job, when you're shopping, calculating the length of a journey or, or speed, or planning a holiday. Hello, my name is Mrs Whitehead. I'm in charge of RPE here at Thamesmead School, and RPE stands for Religion, Philosophy and Ethics. All students at Thamesmead School study RPE as their legal requirement, and they have a one hour a week or two hours a fortnight accessing the topics. And this year, the students are going to be studying the following modules. The first module is all about philosophy, and it's about questioning how we can know anything for sure. In this module, they will be studying Plato, for example, and the parable of the cave. Um, and they'll be encouraged to question the world around them and ask philosophical or deep questions. Module two is about religion versus science, and they will obviously be learning about religion in terms of the Genesis story of creation, but then also learning about Big Bang theory and evolution. We'll be learning about how these can be compatible, so compatibilism, but we'll also be learning about incompatibilism and whether you can actually be a religious person and a scientist at the same time. And it'll be leading to a debate, an evaluation question. Module three is about the problem of evil. So we start with the philosopher Epicurus and there's more of a study about if God is all loving, how does he allow suffering to happen? And there are defences against that and the defences for God's existence despite suffering happening in the world. This module is particularly interesting because it should land around about January in the academic year, which kind of ties in with Holocaust Memorial Day. And with a little bit of luck, we'll be able to Zoom with a Holocaust survivor and we can discuss how those experiences of suffering still remain with a person, even though they can believe in God and have a faith. So that one is an interesting one if it all ties in together and the timing is perfect. Module four takes us into the spring beautifully and it's about free will, free will and determinism. And it's the question of how free are we to make our choices? Are you really in control of your own actions? And then module five is actually crime and punishment. And we look at religious arguments about how criminals should be treated. One of their famous quotes, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth comes up. And we discuss actually some of the most serious crimes what should be done about those criminals. So you can see it's very much weighted towards the P and the E. In year seven, there was very much more of a weight towards the R and the study of religion. In year eight, there's a little bit more of a weighting towards the philosophy and the ethics, but religion is always weaved through everything we do. So it's a religious kind of philosophical and ethical kind of um, exploration during the year. Now, to be successful in RPE, there are some clear skills that we work on. Um, now, this is quite a complex grid that takes us all the way through, really, to the top end of GCSE up to year 11. 
really what we're focusing on here is the first three skills. If we can get a really good evaluation um, out of students who are at the age they are in year eight, then we are looking at some really strong GCSE results further down the line. But essentially, we want students to be able to state and describe some of the key beliefs and the key um, philosophical ideas that they've learned about. Describe, hopefully, in detail using some key words like, for example, um, the problem of evil, defending God and answering the problem of evil is called a theodicy. And so using some of those key vocabulary really helps. And then we want to try and get up to the skill of explaining and comparing so that students can explain the similarities and differences between people's beliefs and views and be able to kind of compare and contrast between what some people might say and what others might say with a particular issue. Any further than that, then we are looking absolutely fantastic because the next skill from that is into the analyze and the evaluation skill, which is much more complex and is, is harder for students to do. In terms of the questions that they will be asked, um, at the end of each module, there will be a little test and this is what the test will look like. It'll be one large question made up of five parts to it, or you could look at it as five small questions if you like. So the total test at the end of each module is out of 24. And you can see the skills build. So we're asking them which one of the following, which means they have to choose the correct key terminology. Give to is, is requiring two sentences stating what they know about something. And then question three and four is about explanation. So students need to be able to state what somebody thinks and then explain why they think it. And obviously you can see there with question four, there needs to be reference to scripture to get that extra mark. And then the last part of the question at the end of every module is that evaluation or that kind of compare and contrast. And we want to look at two sides of the argument. You can see that's worth 12. So it's worth half the question. Everything there is out of 24. So that last question is worth the most amount of marks, but it is also the hardest skill to kind of master. And that is what we need to work on with some of the debates and some of the discussion work that we go through in the year eight course. So how can you help? How can you support your son or daughter here at school? Have a look at their exercise book. Check that their exercise book is of high quality. Check that their notes are user friendly. They are going to form their primary revision material and at the end of every module they'll be given one of those tests out of 24 and each one will have five little questions like that. If they can't use their book and they can't revise from it then they obviously haven't got high quality notes and they haven't done their future self a favour. Help them try and be organised. Try and help them to make sure that they are ready to learn every day. Support your son or daughter to make sure they're using Microsoft Teams and that they're on top of all the different lessons that are being provided. Ask your son or daughter what they've learnt. Ask them to explain it to you. Ask them what they did in philosophy and how they questioned reality. Ask them to teach you what they learnt in class. And then you can have a, a good discussion about some of these, uh, these questions and these issues. Encourage your son or daughter to argue a point of view. Don't maybe encourage your son or daughter just to argue, but to argue different points of view. There are lots of interesting topics um, that we're going to be looking at this year with like the problem of evil, science versus religion. If they could discuss these topics at home, if they could tune into kind of local, national, even like international issues, it'll give them such a wide range and a broad mind when looking at some of these problems. And uh, it makes sure they're not too narrow minded or stuck in one particular view, which means they're going to get more marks when they're evaluating that they consider somebody else's side of what their the argument might be. Tell your son or daughter to always ask for support if they're stuck. I am always available uh, at the end of an email or on Microsoft Teams or in person. So anytime they are stuck, they need to make sure they're asking for support so we can put clarification in place. And then be ready with those question stems. They never change. At the end of each module, there'll always be a 24 mark little test and it'll always be which one of the following give to, explain to, explain to with a quote or scripture and then evaluate a statement. So if they are learning all the stuff that we've taught them in the module and then we keep thinking about those question stems, there's nothing that we can do in the test that's going to surprise them. They should be 
fully ready and they've almost maybe even predicted the questions that are coming up. So that practice makes perfect. I look forward to speaking to you later in the year. Any further questions about RPE, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Science Department. My name is Miss Hayes and I am Deputy Curriculum Leader. If you have any questions regarding this presentation, I can be contacted at the following email address j.hayes at thamesmead.surrey.school.uk. In Year 8, students will complete four biology topics, four chemistry topics and four physics topics. In Autumn 1, we do the fit and healthy topic where we look at the idea of a healthy diet, the idea of digestion and the digestive system and finally we look at the skeleton and muscles of the human body. Then in Unit 2, we look at atoms, elements and compounds and students have an opportunity to find out more about the periodic table and how elements combine to make compounds. In Unit 3, we look at energy, our first physics topic of this year. We look at energy, energy transfers, and then we talk about renewable and non-renewable sources of energy. Unit 4, respiration. So the students then get a chance to, to study the lungs and how the lungs work and also the chemical reaction of respiration that takes place in the cells of all living things. In spring one, we come back to a topic we looked at in year seven. We come back and look at the idea of electricity again. We review the idea of series of parallel circuits and then we investigate the idea of resistance. Unit six is the se second chemistry topic we look at the reactivity series, followed by displacement reactions, and again, students have an opportunity to carry out practical activities. Spring two, we look at photosynthesis. So, uh, so we look at the, the, the reaction that plants carry out to make their own food. And again, we carry out practical work where students can investigate the rate of photosynthesis according to light intensity. Unit eight, we look at forces, gravity and space. So um, again, we look at um, the idea of forces and that gravity is the uh, force that um, acts on, on, mass, on masses. And we look at that idea. Unit nine, we look at microbes and we talk about diseases, vaccination, antibodies. So a really, really interesting topic. Unit 10 is a chemistry topic. We look at the, the three types of rocks, so sedimentary, igneous, metamorphic. We talk briefly about weathering and we also then talk about the idea that um, the, the fossils found in rocks can actually give us information about evolution and evolutionary processes. Finally, in summer two, we, we allow the students, we have some time to, to carry out revision for their end of year exam. Plus, then we look at the, the last chemistry topic, which is structure of atoms. We, we look at the idea of protons, neutrons, electrons. So again, getting our students ready for that concept when they come to study that again at GCSE. And then unit 12, in year seven, the students talked about sound and light and would have looked at the idea of sound and light. We now expand on that topic further by talking about transverse and longitudinal waves and also the electromagnetic spectrum. How are students assessed? During each half term, students will have the opportunity to demonstrate their skills and knowledge through the use of low stakes retrieval practice. This will benefit the retention of knowledge that is required for summative assessments um, and also knowledge that they will require later on at GCSE. And then at the end of each term, students will sit a summative assessment where we use exam style questions with GCSE command words. Maths, literacy and working scientifically um, skills are embedded in these summative assessments. How can you help your child in science? Memory, retention and revision is vital for success in science. Um, students must practice active recall, retrieving information from memory. Embedding these skills early in pupils' Thamesmead career sets them in excellent stead for their GCSEs. Some useful revision methods. Retrieval practice. So ask um, your child to read their notes in their exercise book or using um, a revision guide. 
they can then cover the revision guide, the textbook, the exercise book, write down what they've remembered, go back and check and then make improvements. Interleaving. So if um, a child is revising the topic of cells, tissues and organs, then they would revise maybe animal cells first, moving on to plant cells, so um, a, an additional sort of topic, then move on to specialised cells. Then we would suggest they go back and revise animal cells again, plant cells and specialised cells. So leaving that space will force pupils to actively recall information. Finally, testing. Test your child using question and answers, maybe ask them to design flashcards and then test them based on that information written down. Some useful resources for science. Firstly, the BBC Key Stage 3 Bite Size um, covers all aspects of biology, chemistry, physics, um, offers videos for the students to watch, um, little mini tests, um, notes, um, and key points. So um, a really, really useful website for all of the science content. Twinkle is something um, that you may want to use. You do need to um, subscribe um, and, and pay a sort of a monthly subscription, but that might be something that you might want to sort of investigate. And finally, Seneca Learning is free um, and again offers um, revision material for Key Stage 3 Science. And finally, you may want to purchase a revision guide for your child. Here are some examples of, of revision guides that I do recommend um, that are useful for their learning at Key Stage 3. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Mrs Long and I'm the subject leader for Art and Design. I would like to take this opportunity to outline the main structure of our Art and Design curriculum for Year 8 students. Our students start Year 8 with a project on the natural world, where we explore the way artists have responded to this theme, looking at both traditional and contemporary artists. Students study the work of Maggie Hambling, Georgia O'Keeffe and Yelena James, with a particular focus on painting and mixed media techniques, including colour blending. The final piece for their project is a mixed media triptych based on the artists that they have studied. For our second project in Year 8, we explore the theme of amazing architecture. We look at a range of different periods in architecture and their key characteristics. We have a particular focus on local architecture and buildings such as the National Theatre on London South Bank. The final piece for this project is a mixed media response based on a student's own research and observations. Throughout Year 7, 8 and 9, students are assessed against the assessment objectives of AO1, Developing Ideas, AO2, Experiment and Refine, AO3, Recording Ideas and AO4, Present. These assessment objectives are equally weighted and students are graded holistically based on their sketchbook and final piece. Our students have set homework approximately every other lesson and home learning tasks will vary from artist research and sourcing images to study drawings. Students are expected to spend one to two hours on homework for each piece. Please contact your child's art teacher or myself Mrs Long if you would like further information or to discuss anything in more detail. Thank you. Um, this is our raising achievement slide uh, for year eight. First of all, an overview uh, of what the students will be learning this year. We're currently doing an introduction to Python programming module of work. This builds on what the students were doing in year seven on the code.org website. So all of the theory is the same. It's just in a different context in that we've progressed to a written programming language now, uh, rather than previously we were programming with blocks of code. So um, it's the next sort of stage in their development as programmers uh, is the large focus of this unit's, uh, unit of work. So we look at things like data types, uh, how we store values uh, inside variables, 
selection means using if statements to decide uh, which bit of code to run first and that will always be based on a condition and then we also look at how we can use loops in our code uh, to avoid unnecessary repetition um, and then procedures and functions as well um, to support with that I've listed on the right hand side here the product we use at school to program with is called Thony it's a free program um, it's not very big uh, it should work on all Windows computers and there might be a Mac version as well it's very useful to have that installed but if not um, you can just type in uh, Python online compiler um, and find a web-based version of Python that students can develop their programming with at home but um, there's lots of um, libraries uh, debugging tools um, variable inspection uh, type features that Thony has which we find really useful in the classroom and uh, if it's the same at home it would be a, a good environment uh, for them to be uh, uh, developing that skill. Um, the next unit of work then is understanding computers so this is where we look at the concept first of all the concept of a computer what what is a computer not just the computers that sit on our desks and our laptops um, but is a phone a computer um, is the fire alarm system a, a computer um, we, we basically break it down to, to microprocessors uh, and the idea of uh, there being input process and output data going in processes happening output but then also sometimes storage as well uh, we look at the hardware uh, inside um, most computers uh, and the software needed to run them um, and it's a study of that and the interaction between the two including a look at operating systems themselves as well then we have a look at website development uh, so using HTML code um, we will uh, develop a website o often it's um, to do with uh, like holiday destinations um, so it's almost like a, a kind of travel and tourism uh, type website that they'll make uh, but it will include images and text and um, backgrounds and we'll go through uh, web development and design features that you would expect to see uh, on a good website so uh, the, the way that you do a navigation system, the type of buttons that you have, that kind of thing. Um, and also uh, cascading style sheets, CSS stands for cascading style sheets, uh, is a method of uh, formatting the appearance uh, of your web page uh, with a separate text file essentially. Uh, so we get a, an introduction and a look at all of that and they will have a working web page uh, by the end of that unit. Um, and then lastly we look at spreadsheet modeling. Um, so we think that uh, spreadsheets are still widely used um, in businesses and organizations um, and an introduction and an understanding of them and some of the features and how you can use it its main purpose uh, and the skills needed uh, is what we look at on that unit in terms of assessments then um, assessments happen um, uh, sort of every half term but sometimes it's a little bit longer um, uh, or at the very least uh, every single term um, with those assessments uh, it's a mixture of multiple choice questions short answer questions and a couple of long answer questions each time um, it depends uh, which unit they've just been studying as to what the main focus will be but as the year progresses uh, we're always going to be testing what they've done earlier in the year so um, other than the the very first uh, assessment that they do um, uh, towards the end uh, of October start of November uh, which will all be based on their Python programming everything else will have elements of the previous units that they've studied um, so they have um, they'll have one in uh, one end of unit assessment uh, in December which gets reported home for another in April and then at the end of the year um, an assessment uh, incorporating everything all together uh, and that's computer science uh, I've also listed um, the BBC bite size website is really useful um, web development Python programming understanding computers there are sections on there on the key stage three part of the BBC bite size website which really help in terms of revision There's, it also lets you test your own knowledge as well which I think is quite useful so that's a good way of supporting and raising achievement as well okay thanks
Mr. Lofstadt talking about design technology and food and nutrition. Uh, we try and make sure that our students really understand uh, how to solve practical problems through the learning that they do, uh, including the key areas of research, planning, making, testing, and evaluating, um, and coming up with solutions for problems that we that we set them. Um, because we rotate around the different specialist areas, uh, they will get eight weeks in each area um, covering food, which is a separate subject. Um, Course, core design skills, workshop skills, and uh, textiles and graphics skills. In year eight uh, core design skills, we uh, run a, a live design project where we use the Shepparton Fair um, as, as, a, as a selling point for what we do uh, within the subject. Uh, we need to come up with some laser cut products that are small, flat packed, easy to uh, easy to kind of um, transport and uh, manufacture within school. And we actually use the, the best designs from this project run forwards into the Shepparton Fair in the summer. And we actually allow the students to see them being sold uh, on the on the stall, which is very nice. Um, we evaluate um, our ideas after we come up with some design ideas and both those sets of skills are um, marked to go towards the end of unit end of uh, project assessment and then we also have a test at the end which covers the theory content that we look at in that particular project in the workshop uh, we cover polymers uh, to build on our work on woods in year seven um, we work on polymers that's slightly more complex material slightly harder to work with uh, and it also uh, buys it uh, sort of ties into what science do uh, within um, their work as well. Um, we'll cut, file, drill um, and finish acrylic to make it into a little desk tidy which is nice and neat. Uh, also trying to cut down on the amount of acrylic that we use within school, trying to think about our sustainability and our carbon footprint as well. Um, we also understand how to make how to make a simple circuit board using the skill of soldering as well and we understand how we can use uh, vacuum forming uh, within that as well to make a little case. Um, they'll also learn about forces and tolerance as part of the theory content in this project. Uh, we assess the investigation of polymer products. We uh, investigate. Uh, we mark also the making of the desk tidy, and then add it together with the test of the final theory content. Um, then we uh, you get a final mark for that particular project. The next section in year eight, we uh, cover graphics and textiles, and uh, the students will understand uh, how to develop. Um, their hand stitching skills and we um, how to learn about fabrics and fibers as well. Um, we also work on uh, a chocolate wrapper design which allows the students to uh, really get to get a, a real start on graphics which they do more of in year nine and um, they run, have a whole project in year nine on graphics um, and then we assess the design ideas the evaluation of the final outcome and also we test the theory content that's covered within the project. Finally, uh, new food and nutrition. Um, they will understand the food science and the function of ingredients, as well as developing the practical skills uh, to make more complex food products than they did in year seven. Um, we work through um, different cultures and understanding how different cuisines uh, have have occurred throughout the world um, and understand what the use of local ingredients and how they influence uh, the way food tastes. Um, there is an investigation and there is a, a final make that is um, marked uh, along with the test of the theory content at the end and that gives the final mark for that particular unit. Um, useful resources, BBC Bite Size is always useful, um, Technology Student is really good for the design technology side of things and Seneca Learning is, a, is um, GCC related but because a lot of our content does relate direct, directly to GCC um, content. Uh, Seneca Learning is, is very, very good um, for sort of online recapping and making sure that the students understand and can test themselves on the content that we're going to um, be testing them on at the end of each project. Uh, if you need any other information, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Miss Jones and I'm going to talk to you about geography. Over the course of the year, we will study human, physical and environmental geography. Our first topic, primary industry, looks at the importance of farming, reducing food miles and sustainable food production. Within the population topic, we will look at how the world's population has rapidly increased and the reasons for migration. In the rivers topic, pupils investigate the changing features of a river and different flood protection methods. Our India topic includes how the country is developing and what life is like in Mumbai. 
The glaciation topic looks at how glaciers have shaped our landscape in the UK and which activities take place in the glaciated landscape and how we're going to manage uh, to protect the landscape because of this. Finally, during the coast topic, pupils will study the positive and negative impacts that humans can have on the landscape. We will be assessing a selection of ways, including exams and projects. But for us, one of the most important aspects of the assessment is the feedback they will be given. And the pupils really need to take on board the feedback and then complete it in detail to further develop and consolidate their learning. You can support your child in various ways. One of them is having access to the BBC app as it gives short snippets of the latest science and environmental topics so they can keep up to date with current global issues. Having a world map in your home so your child can develop their locational knowledge to see where places are mentioned on TV programmes or films or maybe where family members live. There are many excellent geogra uh, geographical documentaries on all channels. It is really important to discuss what has happened in lessons to help them consolidate their learning and to get them to share their new knowledge with you. It's a good habit to get into for GCSEs because then these discussions will really help with their revision. Finally, there are just a few websites which pupils can use to further develop their knowledge. As part of the wider curriculum, they can also be a member of the Capture the World Photographic Club. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. I would just like to talk to you for a short while regarding history at Thamesmead. The study of history is divided into two sections. Disciplinary skills are the main skills involved in reading history and acquiring knowledge and understanding from its study. These include source analysis, including usefulness and reliability of source material, interpretations, the how and why interpretations of historical persons and events differ, change and continuity, examples of themes that have changed or stayed the same over time, significance, the importance of historical events and people, cause and consequence, the reasons for and the results of significant people and events, and finally, chronology, which is the order in which events happen. Students can expect to use the full range of these skills throughout the Key Stage 3 curriculum, usually focusing on one or multiple skills within a single lesson. Substantive knowledge refers to the fabric of historical study and the knowledge that can be gained from its study. The Key Stage 3 curriculum loosely follows the chronological study of British and international history across three main time periods. Year 7 focuses on the medieval period, including events such as, but not limited to, the Norman Conquest, the Black Death, medieval Britain, immigration through time and the Peasants' Revolt. Year 8 is dedicated to the early modern period, including the Tudor monarchs, English Civil War and British Empire. Year 9 focuses on the industrial and modern period of Britain from about 1800 until the modern day. For more information on these topics, please refer to the Thamesmead website for a full list of topics covered at Key Stage 3. In order to sustain and encourage historians, the History Department at Thamesmead will ensure the following. 1. Consistent, high quality teaching and learning with effective use of classroom time to develop disciplinary skills and substantive knowledge. Two, regular assessments, both formative and summative, to assess students' understanding of historical events and their ability in deploying the various skills available to them. Three, engaging and knowledge extending home learning. At home, you can implement the following strategies in order to sustain engagement and ultimately increase the ability of our historians. 1. Engaging in wider world issues in the news and online. This will assist in developing disciplinary skills. 2. Read, watch, speak. 
please encourage students to read books, journals or historical websites, watch documentaries and historical dramas, and then finally speak to them about what they have learned and their thoughts about it. This will also contribute to their skills as a historian. 3. Visiting historical environments, for example, historic sites or museums. This will help to enthuse and engage students in the world of history that surrounds them. 4. Engaging in reading and literature on historic events and people. Finally, I would like to thank you for listening to this short section on Key Stage 3 History at Thamesmead. If you have any questions, then please do not hesitate to contact me directly through the email on screen. This can also be found on the Thamesmead website. Thank you for your time. Bonjour à tous, hola a todos, bienvenidos en la clase de l'año 8. Uh, bienvenue dans la classe année 8. So year 8 in MFL, uh, we continue from year 7 and what we've learned about family, but we develop a little bit more. We adding uh, being able to talk about jobs uh, and also what family members like or dislike. Uh, also key vocabulary about hobbies, uh, expressing what your family likes to do, what you like to do as well, inviting people to go out making excuses for not going out maybe and uh, we continue to use the target language in the classroom um, trying to win points and have fun uh, is something that uh, we like to continue from year seven uh, we also are building help uh, students build their confidence in terms of using tenses uh, using the present tense but adding events in the past and future actions. How can you support your child? Well, I think this is very much following on to from your seven, uh, inviting the um, target language, the Spanish and the French into your home uh, is a very good idea to help your, your, your child feeling really comfortable showing off what they've learned, maybe reading out loud to you in Spanish or, or French to practice their pronunciation. I think this is a really good idea to uh, do this as a family if you can. Uh, we continue to test vocabulary uh, frequently, so helping them revise and building their little bank of flashcards, uh, encouraging them to show their flashcards and, and testing themselves as well to become independent learners is a very good idea. Um, also, uh, film nights at home in French or Spanish or watching a film you all very much like and changing the language to Spanish or French could be a really good way to help your child using their languages at home. On this slide you can see some key links and websites that we like to use in MFL to help our students. Um, they, you know, please encourage your uh, child to use either Memorize or Quizlet to practice their vocabulary. Uh, they can have maybe some learning set by their class teachers, but they can also do some activities independently. BBC website is a fantastic uh, platform with lots of videos and fun quizzes for everyone in the family um, and this is always uh, up to date. I think it's a really uh, good resource. Um, Duolingo is one of my favorites. Um, it's an application you can have on your computer or your phone and I really like it because you can uh, practice your listening, reading, your writing sk uh, skills, but also your speaking. Uh, you can have a lot of fun in loads of different languages, not only French or Spanish. And finally, Seneca Learning. It is full of really, really good exercises for Key Stage 3 in French and Spanish with self-marking activities. You can practice your listening skills, your reading, and um, yes, we, we really like it. Voilà, I hope that was really useful. Uh, please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any more questions. And I hope your uh, child will enjoy Year 8. Au revoir, adios.
Hi everyone, it's Mr Evans here and I'm here to talk about Year 8 music and how students can make the most out of this year and be as successful as possible. Now the aim for us as a music department is to enable learners to develop fundamental musical skills, to develop a cultural awareness, to allow students to build collaborative skills and become excellent team players and to embody the Thamesmead values. Now there's plenty going on in the music department this year and if your child is interested we have ensembles and choirs. Um, I run a soul band, Mrs Hickman runs the choir, we have Mr Anderson who comes in and runs a club called Jamming Together and these are a great way of students becoming better musicians, developing their performance skills, developing their um, ensemble skills and just their general musicianship. Um, now there's performances coming up, we're going to have an acoustic concert in November, there's going to be a rock concert in, in at the end of March. So there's plenty of opportunities for students to get involved in if they want to immerse themselves in music here at Thamesmead and become a better musician. Another thing they could do is learn to play an instrument. We have an excellent group of peripatetic teachers who come in and teach lessons throughout the day and after school. So the information is on the school website. If you go to the parents section and then down to music tuition, all the information is there and I've put the link on screen. So um, that's a great way of students becoming, um, you know, developing their resilience and their independence. There's a lot of studies that show that um, learning to play an instrument improves students' academic success and their speech and their reading and their creativity and working memory and it's a great way of, of obviously of improving their music musicality obviously. So um, if you're interested I highly recommend um, signing your child up for music lessons and if we currently don't offer lessons in, in a, uh, an instrument your, your child would, would like to learn then please do let me know. And I'll do everything I can to find a teacher who, who will teach um, you know, whatever instrument that may be. We, we currently have a lot of students applying to teach to, to learn piano and drums um, and less, in, less take, take up or less interest for, for some of the more orchestral instruments. Um, so you know, if your child would like to learn an orchestral instrument, we're hoping to get a violin teacher in soon. We have a very good brass teacher, but like I say, if there's any instruments we don't offer currently, please let me know. A great way of students becoming better musicians is listening to lots of music, whether that be as a family or individually, um, uh, trying to appreciate music and understand music from different eras, different cultures and all around the world is a great way of becoming a better um, mu musician and having a better understanding of music. I've included on here the topics that we're looking at this year, so we're currently looking at major and minor and uh, we're thinking about keys and scales and chords and after half term we're going to be looking at composing music for a scary story, so looking at chromaticism and dissonance and after Christmas we're going to learn a 12 bar blues to play the chords, to play the bass line, to play an improvisation using a blues scale and then we're going to do a solo performance so that will be a project where we'll work on the keyboards and each student will do a solo performance at the end of it. Now for most of them that will be on the keyboards but if they sing or they play another instrument that could be on, on any instrument of their choice but we'll listen to all students perform individually later on in the year and that's something we do in year seven, eight and nine and it's a great way of hearing their progress and hearing you know the, the talents of the students here. Um, at Thamesmead. And then finally musical adverts, so that will be working in groups to compose um, a piece of music to accompany a TV advert. Right, I've included on here in the bottom corner the, um, the elements of music. Mad T-shirt is the, the mnemonic that we use to remember those nine elements, so if you're looking to support your child at home um, you could test them on these elements and test them on the keywords that relate to these elements and these are elements that are used in all um, you know, every piece of music uses these nine elements in, di in various ways and it's using them differently that makes different pieces sound different to one another. Uh, and, and, and that's about it from me really. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch um, and I'll respond as quickly as I can. Um, but that's it. So thank you for listening and I'll see you soon. Good evening and welcome to the PE and Dance Department here at Thamesmead. I am Mr Cowley, subject leader. Our aim is to provide a challenging and diverse curriculum designed to encourage independence, develop confidence and promote teamwork. 
and we will be doing this by offering the students a broad and balanced curriculum based on a rotational basis. The activities covered during the school year will be a selection from the following activity list. Netball, football, rugby, hockey, basketball, badminton, volleyball, gymnastics, dance, athletics, fitness, rounders, cricket, softball and tennis. At the end of each term, the students will be assessed on the activities that they have covered that half term, which is based on their practical ability, their understanding of the rules and regulations, and on how well they can evaluate their own and their peers' performance. We also hope to offer a range of sports clubs throughout the year after school and into many inter-school, district and county competitions. So it'll be great for your son or daughter to attend um, any of these clubs and they can be found on the Thamesmead Plus, which is sent out every Friday, as well as also shared um, in the student notices within tutor time. Thank you.